and welcome to Condo Insider on Think Tech Hawaii. Today I'm here with Diana Marshall, the Security Solutions Integrator with Alert Alarm. And we are going to be talking a little bit about how HOAs and AOAs should handle the use of security cameras and probably a lot of other wonderful information. So Diana wasn't able to join us um, through via camera due to some technical difficulty, but we have her lovely picture there. So Diana, would you like to introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about yourself? Sure. Hi, Krista. Thank you so much for having me today. Um, so, yes, I am uh, Diana Marshall uh, with Alert Alarm Hawaii, and uh, I have uh, been living in Hawaii for about 18 years, and uh, for the last 15 of those years, uh, I have been uh, working with Alert Alarm Hawaii as a security uh, solutions integrator. Um, and um, so... So, yeah, tell, our, tell us what that means. What does that mean? Okay. Uh, well, so what that means is um, I work mostly with condominium associations and okay. um, Class A buildings and larger buildings uh, and have a look at what their existing security systems uh, are uh, as far as whether they have cameras yet or if they don't have cameras, whether they have access control systems or not. And what I do is I... Uh, merge them together to design complete systems for the uh, end users. Wow. So you're you're perfect for this show because that's exactly the audience that we're speaking with. So that's right, great. Right. So, so let me know, well, let me ask you this before we get into the heart of the matter, just because it's such obviously in the middle of everyone's lives right now. Um, <laughs> has or how has, if it has, the COVID-19 pandemic affected your company, and then I also wanted to know if it's if you've seen any kind of an increase or decrease in crime um, since you kind of monitor that. I'm just curious sure. if that's been affected. Well, for the most part, um, we are. I don't want to say we are business as usual. Uh, however, we are 100% fully operational. Thank goodness, and uh, we have a full staff at our central monis monitoring station, which is here in Honolulu. And for uh, most folks uh, who live here, you know that Alert Alarm is the largest monitoring company in the state with over 35,000 monitored accounts. So it's so important for us to stay you know, fully operational uh, at all times. So the things that have changed, though, is that uh, the non-essential workers, such as myself and uh, other administrative people within our offices, um, are, are working from home, uh, like a lot of folks out there. And uh, but we do have, you know, full staff at our monitoring station, which is over by Honolulu Airport, 24/7. Uh, That's amazing. Yeah, I've been to the facility. It is. <laughs> Quite impressive. I mean, it is, you know, it looks like you're almost going into a, I won't give away any secrets, but it just looks like you're going almost into a military type environment as far as, <laughs> not militant, but so high tech and, and, and much larger than I would have ever anticipated. So quite impressive. Um, mm -hmm. So t talking about, let's say you have an association that has considering putting in a security system and they've been considering part of that security system to be cameras. What are some of the pros and cons and things they should consider? Are there any legal issues? Why don't you talk to us a little bit about that? Okay, so uh, most condominium homeowners associations uh, consider putting uh, security cameras in because uh, they've either had incidents or they just want to keep an eye on what's going on, which we call situational awareness. And um, some of the things to consider are, you know, what are the areas uh, you want to keep an eye on and how will these be monitored, you know, as well as, you know, what are the homeowners associations rules uh, and bylaws, you know, according to, depending on the different locations, you know, um, for example, you want to make sure that you would not install cameras at an area that uh, the homeowners have a reasonable reasonable expectation of privacy. 
So typically cameras get installed um, in common areas and, and so on. So th those are usually, that's the first step. Those are the calls I get when uh, a condominium association is, is considering that. So they wouldn't want to have anything facing somebody's lanai, obviously, correct? Right, or, right. You know, those type of things. And then are there different levels of cameras? I mean, I, I saw some pretty cool things when I did visit your facility, you know, sure. where you can actually mm -hmm. hear things. And are there any restrictions to having, you know, voice recorded or voice monitoring type of, of cameras? Sure, sure. Okay, so um, there are really basically two different types of cameras, and I mentioned the phrase situational awareness. Mm -hmm. That type of a camera, you're looking at a broader area. You just want to see what's going on, you know, in the common areas or maybe in the pool area, um, a courtyard, for example. Are there a lot of people congregating? And we'll talk about that in a minute. But then, um, uh, so those areas, uh, are usually, you know, approved by homeowners associations to, you know, to install cameras. So those are situational awareness cameras. And then you have other cameras that are more dedicated to um, critical or sensitive areas uh, with regard to uh, condominiums. Those areas would be, you know, uh, where the power plants are, the electrical rooms, and so on. Um, a, a lot of times you want to keep an eye on what's going on in those areas. So those cameras are more uh, focused at a certain area or, you know, in, at some condo buildings where the trash bin areas are mm -hmm. you know, for obvious reasons. You know, people get a little crazy. Uh, and then ele elevators, of course. Elevators, start. absolutely. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's, that's yeah. Elevator one. lobbies. Yes. And now, in any case that you've ever seen or, or is it even legal for them to have sound where they can hear what's going on, or is it typically just cameras? Absolutely. So um, I would say most of the um, newer cameras have the capability of having microphones and speakers installed, you know, on them. And the reason for this is uh, for uh, what we call interactive video monitoring. So let's say, for example, uh, you've got your site manager in in his or her office, mm -hmm. and uh, they are alerted by one of the cameras that there are people congregating by the pool, and in this era of the COVID-19, that's not allowed anymore. An alert can be sent to the site manager, and the site manager has the ability to speak to, you know, the, the people or, uh, that are in that area. For example, you know, you are at the pool area, which is prohibited. Please leave immediately. And then the site yeah. manager has the ability to hear any kind of feedback. Or, wow. if, yeah, if, uh, for example, the offenders at the pool area are not leaving, uh -huh. because a lot of times, <laughs> interestingly, a lot of times the uh, the offenders think, oh, must be a, a canned uh Hand message or something, and so the site manager can say, "Yes, I'm speaking to all five of you. You with the red baseball cap, and you with the striped shirt." And then usually that's pretty effective in, in getting them away from there. I would imagine. That's yeah. So those are those are with m more of the uh, newer uh, camera systems that that are out there. So uh, along with cameras, what other types of you know, do you do key fobs or you, do, you do, do you handle all those type of things as well? Absolutely, yes. Oh, okay. And so, so that's where the integrator part of uh, my title comes in. So what we do is we match up the cameras in the uh, locales of the readers uh, where the homeowners have access to. And say, for example, a fob is stolen mm -hmm. and you know, so the person who stole it goes to use that reader in a certain area. We are able to track that fob because we have, you know, the database of who who own, actually owns that fob, but we also have the ability to match that person up with, you know, the, the video image uh, uh, at the camera that's located at a reader that that person tries to enter through. Wow. Uh, I never knew so much was in a little tiny fob, and I have many of them. Sure different reason. 
Yeah, now there are some of the older style uh, fobs and a lot of you are familiar with the core key systems. Those types of uh, readers are do not work that way. Only the newer ones, uh, uh, whether they are proximity or smart readers, smart card readers, um, where you wave a fob at it or wave a card, you know, uh, at it. We call them credentials. Um, only those types of systems will have the uh, database. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. So. Do you do do you personally? I know I'm sure the company does, but do you handle commercial as well, businesses, or are you primarily? Yes, I do. You do. So with yes, the with all the businesses being empty right now, and I mean everyone's at home for the most part, at least especially storefront. Have you seen an increase in notifications to the company that they're, you know, break-ins or vandalism and things like that? As much as I hate to say it, unfortunately, we have seen an uptick in crime and break-ins uh, recently, mostly with the small businesses. Um, you know, as I mentioned before, we, we monitor many, many accounts, um, uh, intrusion detection systems, also known as burglar alarm systems. The residential uh, burglaries have gone down, but the more commercial businesses, um, it, uh, burglaries have gone up. So we yeah, have seen Mm -hmm. I, I would imagine that would be the case, you know. Yeah. Right. If, right. If so, that. yeah, we're we're staying pretty busy uh, because we have a lot of businesses calling us and saying, "Hey, I want to upgrade my system, or I want to install a brand new system because their businesses are going to be empty for you know maybe a month or longer." If you were, if you had someone that you know had a small business and they had the choice from a financial perspective of choosing cameras or an actual like door window monitoring system it could only do one or the other which would you would you think is more effective which would you recommend well we now have uh, camera systems that can act as intrusion detection systems uh, because we can program certain um, activities so that the camera recognizes that as an entry or a break-in and it can send an alarm to our monitoring center. But if I had a choice, one or the other, you know, I would I would pick an intrusion detection system as a starting point, and have sick. yeah have the uh, have the cameras there as a backup. And then you know to take it a step further, of course, alert alarm also monitors camera systems um, uh, alerts, like I mentioned right. before. So uh, that's that's being more proactive than reactive. So yes. you know, with, with an alarm system, the bad guy's already in, and then you go back and look at the video after the fact. Right. With interactive video monitoring, it's happening right now. Oh, Our dispatchers funny. can can uh, describe exactly what's going on to the authorities in in real time, and that's that's big. Oh, that's amazing. That's amazing. Well, we are already halfway through the show, if you can believe it. And wow. we're going to take, um, I believe, a 30 or 60 second break, and we will return shortly. It's okay. Aloha. I'm Kili'i Akina, the host of Hawaii Together on the ThinkTech Hawaii Broadcast Network. Hawaii Together deals with the problems we face in paradise and looks for solutions, whether it's with the economy, the government, or society. We're streamed live on ThinkTech biweekly at 2 p.m. on Mondays. I want to thank you so much for watching. We look forward to seeing you. Again, I'm Kili'i Akina. Aloha. Aloha and welcome back to Condo Insider. I'm your host, Krista Stadler, here on Think Tech Hawaii with Diana Marshall with Alert Alarm. Uh, she is a security solutions integrator. Love that title. Welcome back. And we have some more things to talk about related to security. So 
with a uh, you know a system that has um, ported capability, and I would imagine some of that might be internally in your facility. I'm not sure. Maybe uh, you have to explain that to me, whether it's internal or external at the location, or maybe you offer both. How long? Mm -hmm. How long do they um, should they keep that footage? How, okay, so that's usually determined by the homeowners association. And so what I explain usually to the uh, to the association is, you know, it's up to you. Typically, we know of an incident uh, within one or two days. Um, but, you know, what about those incidents where the homeowner wasn't home and then they find their vehicle was damaged, you know, two weeks later? So um, I always recommend between 14 and 30 days for okay. condominiums. Uh, just, you know, to play it safe. And then um, usually we can go track, go back and track the footage all the way back to 30 days. Uh, no oh, wow, that's a lot, that's a lot mm -hmm. longer than I thought. That's great. Mm -hmm. And is that in, in a typical system or are there two different types? Is that typically held in the facility? Like I'm thinking of some of the condos, the, the more upper, you know, high end, mm -hmm. really nice lobbies and it's got the three security people there with all the monitors. Is it kept there? Or yes. would it be kept in your facility? Well, that is an excellent question. And so here's how it works. So say, for example, uh, you have installed 20 cameras, and they're all 5 megapixels each. I have a calculation I work with to determine um, how large the hard drive is going to be on the network video recorder to give you 30 days worth of recording. And wow. it isn't always exactly you know, on, on the mark, but uh, so that video footage is stored right there on site at the condo building, usually in the site manager's office. So and having said that, say, for example, uh, there's an incident. The site manager is able to retrieve that video. He can uh -huh. download video clips that can be kept forever. So okay. that's, that's the answer to that question. So that they can take those segments that they want, maybe if there's some kind of a legal issue pending, and sure. keep those. Yeah, I've, I've also seen photos, like still photos taken from yes. the, the video footage. Yes, um, stills can be provided. Also, what we call video clips, which are usually between 10 and 15 seconds long. And right. uh, so, and then, uh, you know, I want to I want to insert something here about that. So uh, there are a lot of systems out there, Krista, that are the old analog style cameras that was traditionally what everybody installed for many, many, many years. Now these new IP megapixel cameras are kind of somewhat new to the market. They've been around for about 10 years, but more and more mainstream lately. The old analog uh, camera systems, um, will not provide what we call forensic quality video that might be admissible in court. That's something to consider. For, for yeah. Um, so the difference between those old analog cameras and the new IP megapixel cameras mm -hmm. is with the, with the analog cameras, when you go to zoom in on those images, they get real fuzzy and pixelated quickly. Whereas yes. With the IP megapixel cameras, just like on your on your smartphones, when you go to zoom in on them, they still stay pretty crisp and clear. So, uh, so there are some video clips that will be admissible in court. You know, should should it go that far, and and uh, this is why we always encourage um, the condo associations if they still have those old analog systems out there, uh, they should. Uh, modernized soon to the IP megapixel systems because the, the costs have come down uh, on those systems now. Okay, that's really interesting and good information. I, this all fascinates me, actually. And who, <laughs> typically, interesting. who typically has access? Um, I mean, obviously the folks that are manning the security booth, but who has access typically to the footage? Is it kept real tight? Well, it's been my experience that the site manager should always have access. If he's got a security manager, then of course that person as well. Um, also, usually board members, and not all of them, but some of the board members uh, might have access or should have access to the video if they need to. For example, what if something happens to the site manager? There needs to be another person, for example, on the board 
who has the username and password to get into the system if, if they need to. So that's always kind of a, a precautionary measure to have somebody on the board have access to it. Um, there has been a question out there for homeowners uh, that they want to have, you know, access to the video feeds. And, of course, that is completely up to the Homeowners Association, but probably not a good practice. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, you, you want to limit the number of people who have access to those video feeds. Uh, but, you know, a, a, you know, one exception to that rule is, for example, if you have one of those entry phones that doesn't have a built-in camera, mm -hmm. and you do have a camera system, though, that is near that entry phone, you could provide access to that one camera only to, to the homeowners and tenants. I've seen that. Yeah. Yeah, there's a way to do that. And that would be the only exception uh, as far as homeowners having access to the to the uh, network video storage. If you're taking a property, I'll just use an average, I don't know, 20, 20 floor condo. It was built in the late 70s or something. Never mm -hmm. had any type of security system. Is there a, is it from a from an installation standpoint? Um, you're just thinking of the building now, not really common areas. Is there a lot of electrical work to be done, or is most of it battery-based? And what's the time frame typically look like for installing something like that? Okay, so uh, that's a great question. Um, so typically, these uh, the cameras use Cat5 wire, and we like to protect them in conduit. Cat5 is considered low voltage, so an electrician does not need to be involved. Um, oh. uh, Alert Alarm Hawaii actually installs all of the, uh, the wiring, and um, we subcontract the conduit installation to uh, licensed electricians where it's needed or warranted. So, um, and those are, you know, code requirements. But right. uh, it's been my experience that usually you'll have, you know, the pool areas, and, and everything's going to be mainly on the first level of the condo building, of course, unless they're on a hillside. But, you um, we home run all those wires back to the site manager's office. You asked about battery operated. We do not know of any battery operated cameras that really work well. So we do not sell them and we don't recommend them. They really need to um, get better with that technology before we can, we can stand behind those. And then um, as far as, um, you know, the actual power required, it's right at the head end in the site manager's office. Usually just need some standard power outlets, 110, and everything else is low voltage. Great. That sounds easy breezy. You know, I have a question. It really is. It, I've noticed, uh, because of course I'm, I do property management, uh, rental management, and I happen to live in a condo, There, I don't typically see cameras in the hallways. In other words, you get off the elevator, and often I thought it would be nice to have them there, but is there some restriction about having cameras in the hallways in condos? Not, not that I know of, and actually I uh, know of a couple buildings where they do have them. They have them on every oh, floor. Sorry. Yeah, That's in the great. elevator lobby looking, um, they want to keep an eye on what's going on near the elevator at the elevator lobby, but it also captures the hallways all the way down to the end. Uh, and, you know, they had certain situations over there where they deemed it was it was needed yeah. uh, and you know this one building I'm thinking of and um, yeah so I don't know that there are any restrictions and you know usually we install them wherever the homeowners association asks us to install them except Thank for you. Yeah, except for if they're looking into you know somebody's win bedroom window we don't do that well, that'd be good <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know if you can, so if you if you're uncomfortable talking about this, but I I think it's really interesting and, and important for someone who would want to use your services or a company like yours. But mm -hmm. from what I understand, there's different levels of mm, uh, how do you, I don't know if I want to use your background checks or I don't sure. security levels that that you have to have to even work for your organization, which is very comforting from my yes. perspective. To know that the people in that building have been really screened and I, uh, if you're comfortable talking about that that's great i think it's a sell oh, absolutely yeah absolutely this is something that we're pretty transparent about 
Uh, Alert Alarm Hawaii is a UL listed company, and everybody's heard of the UL listing, Underwriter, Underwriters Laboratories, but uh, the special meaning it has for a monitoring station such as ours is that uh, we have to have certain um, protocols and policies and procedures in place in order to monitor places like banks, um, high-end jewelry stores, and other uh, you know high-end stores down in Waikiki, for example, uh, because their insurance requires it. Because of that, we have to be very careful about who we hire. So there is a background check for a criminal background check for every single employee at Alert Alarm. Of course, you know the usual uh, drug testing and screening. We do that as well as random drug testing. Um, that's required, and uh, Alert Alarm is is um, pretty on top of that. Yeah, I, 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 that was one of the things when I visited your facility that I was, mm -hmm. among other things, very impressed right. with. Right. It's important yeah. to know that whoever it is that you're allowing to, you know, come onto your property, whether it's a business or a, a residential, um, that they have been vetted. They are, you can trust that um, they have been with the company usually for a number of years <laughs> and because the, the average, you know, person at Alert Alarm has been with our company for several years. You know, me being there 15 years, I'm actually still one of the newbies. That's, that's <laughs> amazing. That's amazing. Yeah. I, remember, I remember you had one guy down in the shop. He'd been there for, I think, since the beginning, and he knew everything about everything. Um, oh, yeah. yes, yes. We have a lot of those, a lot of those. Yeah. Of course, we have um, the newer guys. You know, they've only been there a couple of years, uh, but we don't turn them loose until they have been thoroughly trained and vetted. And uh, we're really proud of that fact. Yes. Well, you know what, Diana? We are coming towards the end here, but I just want to thank you so much for taking the time to do this. And it's really interesting to me, and I would imagine to many of our viewers, um, and I, just, well, I think that they're just so fortunate to have you and for us to have you in Hawaii and in the industry. So thank you for sharing your expertise. And it's I'll been my pleasure. Again soon. All thank right. Thank you very much. You stay safe. Thank, thank you. you. And thank you, everyone out there in Think Tech land. Thanks for joining us. Um, my next show, which will be a month from now, the first Thursday, I plan to talk about basically rental management and the effects of COVID-19 um, from landlord and tenant perspective. So look out for that and we'll see you next month. Take care.